Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think we can start. Welcome to everybody. Hope you had a good month. And thanks for uh, joining us here as the last gathering of the year. It's great to see you all here again. And a special word of welcome to our guests, uh, the PhD students. Debbie, good to see you here. Haven't seen you for some time. But great for seeing you here, and thanks for joining and for working, almost helping your colleagues to articulate their voice around this research journey, because that is a, that's a key thing for us, that you will use this opportunity, as you are going to do today to learn. Thank you. To talk, yes. and to find the voice, and to get terrified at times, but <laughs> to enjoy it, hopefully. Thank you. So uh, we're going to start off with Tulani, and just as you know, it's yeah. not really a, a big thing, the introduction, but Tulani, is uh, the chief executive manager for HR at Denal Land Systems, and he's got a very elaborative, Linda, topic, which in itself I think is problematic, but you know, he chose it. He's, he's working on design, develop, implement, and evaluate, Imeka, a leadership development framework for the defense <coughs> industry, and he's going to use the South African context. So I think let's just think about it. He, he wants to do a number of things. He wants to design, develop, implement, and evaluate a leadership development framework for the defense industry. Mm -hmm. And I sense that you're going to work specifically in the South African context. Absolutely. Good. So let's start. Maybe you want to make some opening remarks. Thank you. Um, first thing that I want to say is I'm aware that the defense industry is a very closed industry. And uh, few people really know what the landscape is inside the defense industry until somebody explain it. A good example is quite a number of people believe that um, uh, companies like NEL, for instance, which is um, a bigger uh, OEM in South Africa in defense, belongs to the <coughs> Department of Defense. I mean, it makes sense. But the defects are different. The uh, Department of Defense is the, is the customer, is the client of companies like Denal. The, the owner is the Department of Enterprise. So it is a state-owned uh, company in the same stable with ESCOM, in, in the same stable with Transnet. So it's mind-boggling when you tell people that, because they say, we believe Dinell to be you know, a, a company of soldiers in the army. And it's not true. Uh, basically, perhaps I should just sketch a little bit, um, uh, with your permission, uh, um, um, Professor Benny, my background and then uh, a little bit on the landscape of uh, what exactly does the defense industry, especially internationally, but especially in the South African context where I want to work, look like today. Um, as Professor Benny, my, my name said, my name is Tulan Matlinza. Uh, I actually was born and bred in Guazulu I come from a, a township called Umlazi. Umlazi. It's one of those, uh, most of the townships in, in, in South Africa that is very much underdeveloped. Uh, you know, but if you, if you drive through today, you know, you see some pockets of development, but when we grew up, you know, things were not there from basic infrastructure to basic services, you know. You know poverty still even today strikes you as you walk as you drive through the township. With quite a number of families there that are living below the bread line. I must say that I also come from that type of family uh, that, that was poverty stricken, stricken. and uh, a family of six, uh, five uh, boys and one girl. My parents were semi-literate. They hardly went to school. But uh, an irony of all is that uh, they emphasized education a lot to us as children. They drilled to us. We, we almost got indo indoctrinated on it. Uh, I think this background, actually, this is where I want to kick off uh, in terms of uh, you know who is to learn. I actually see this background, my, 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 my upbringing, as the thing that shaped my belief system. Today, I believe in the power of education. And uh, I believe that education, amongst other things, is the main key that can open the doors, you know, and bring opportunities closer to individuals, regardless of the background. I've seen it, I've experienced it. But I think uh, of importance is around education. I believe that uh, one should use the little knowledge that one has legal experience that one has, even your position, if it's possible, to empower others. That is my fundamental belief. Uh, uh, it's actually in line with the thesis that I want to write, because 
it was from this background that uh, from an early age in HR, I started getting involved in things like other training, supervisory and management training. I started getting involved in talent acquisition and talent management, which I'm still doing, mentorship and coaching, which I'm still doing. It's coming from that particular background. I think uh, the, the, the upbringing taught me that uh, the, the human behavior, the power of human behavior is in influencing others, motivating others, directing others, it can never be overestimated. It, it's super. That's why in my mentoring and coaching environment, I've actually experienced that uh, and learned that people need few things from the people that have walked the chain uh, behind, I mean, uh, in front of them. They need an objective listener to say, this is the problem that I'm having, this is the challenge that I'm having, how can you help me? They need uh, an objective assessor to say, this is where I think you're going wrong and that type of thing. They need a door opener uh, to networks and connections. Uh, they, of course, need skills and knowledge transfer. They need a performance enhancer. They need uh, a strategic direction in terms of uh, strategic insights. Now, with this experience, uh, in my mentoring life and coaching life, uh, uh, I've actually positioned myself to be a friend and a facilitator to all the youngsters that I work with, uh, to be a coach at some, at some point in time, to be a good guy, but I think of importance to be an honest feedback giver. Uh, I think that's very crucial because for those guys that uh, understand the, the Johari window from the people that studied industrial psychology, you will know that each and every individual has what we call blind spot. Uh, uh, you will need somebody else to actually expose the limitations that you have in your blind spot. Therefore, during this coaching session that I do with people, I, I make sure that uh, I become an honest feedback giver. Uh, but I also believe that um, I, I, I mustn't be just a team player, but uh, I must be a leader in the team. That is how uh, I project myself. And uh, I enjoy the uniqueness of every human being and I like people to see me as a person that they can trust, as a person that is very receptive and helpful in what, uh, whatever their needs are. I believe that people are capable, everybody is capable, as long as there is some effort that is given to develop the people. Uh, basically, that is actually from myself, but uh, if, Professor, you can allow me to sketch a little bit. Okay, but let me yeah. therefore say, so what we hear is, almost from your ontological perspective, you're very grounded in an awareness towards people around you Absolutely. and the role that you could play. So how sensitive are you then that how that will influence your ultimate decision of creating a leadership framework? What is going to drive the process in terms of uh, whether it goes east and west is the amount of reception that people are going to have uh, I've spoken earlier on around the Johari window. Um, honest feedback, uh, uh, experience has told us, is not really accepted easily by some other people. If I approach a CEO who's been a, a CEO in the defense industry for the past 50 years, who believes that he's succeeding, and tell that CEO that, look, this is not the direction that you should be going. Your emotional intelligence is not the way it's supposed to be. Your employee engagement, your employee motivation tactics are not working. It's going to take really um, uh, some convincing for that CEO to say, what are you proposing? So basically, um, I see a situation where one has to go grounding and say, these are the models that work. These are the models that work based on this evidence. If you compare that evidence with where the defense industry is there, that should make a competing case for developing a leadership <coughs> framework going forward. All right, can you share with us a little bit more? So that's that's how you look at from inwardly, from yourself. Absolutely. Can you look a little bit more around the epistemological perspectives that you have around how do you perceive the reality around you? Thank you. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't mind, I'd like to start the epistemological um, epistemological perspective by just sketching um, a very short analogy and uh, I will explain in a minute the relevance of this analogy to the question that uh, the professor is asking. If, if, if I look at the world and I picture the world, I actually compare it to a, a blank canvas. You know the canvas that painters use, the, the artists use? A very huge canvas 
And uh, the powers that be in this canvas are very open-minded in the sense that uh, they allow any artist, painter that enjoys and is passionate to paint, to freely walk into this uh, without limitations to this canvas with uh, various multicolored buckets of painting and start painting in whatever corner that they want using their skills, creating ma ma magnificent pictures of art from there with freedom. That is what I imagine. And uh, these powers that be in this analogy of mine should be so open-minded, should be so competent, and the attitude should be so positive that it actually goes into these uh, painters and make these painters excited to be part of this canvas, to, to, to relate to this canvas. And it shouldn't end there. It should be so contagious, the, the attitude that they have, that the canvas itself start attracting more very, very, very highly skilled artists to come and paint, therefore maximizing mm. the painting efforts in this particular canvas. Being smart as well, as, as, as powers that be, to say, should this Painters find a reason of not being happy. They can vote with their feet, which will be very devastating for the operations of the canvas. And uh, with freedom, with liberty, that is artists have, the powers that be, they must be also so strategic to maintain and manage the, the activities in the canvas. What do I mean by that? To ensure that uh, whilst these artists have liberty of painting what they want, where they want, but uh, at a certain point in time, they ensure as managers of that canvas that uh, the, the canvas corners are well covered by uh, every, having a right painter at the right corner at the right time. Now, what is the relevance of all this? If I look at the world in all spheres of our life, could it be in politics? Could it be in, in business? Could it be in sports? The, the, the importance of the attitude, the competencies of the powers that be is a decider whether that institution is going to be counted among the failing institutions or the successful institutions. Mm -hmm. Now, on my way here, I was thinking about a few things that are surrounding us, which are actually examples exactly of what I'm talking about. Today, we hear of something called brain drain, where citizens of a country are threatening to leave the country to, to go and plow their trade in, in foreign countries because they believe that uh, in the country of their own, their skills and abilities are not recognized. They believe that uh, uh, the, the powers that be are, are not really skilled enough, competent enough to really understand what they can contribute into their country. Therefore, they have to leave, which points exactly to the analogy of the canvas that I've made. We hear about um, today something that is called service um, uh, delivery protest in South Africa, where citizens are saying, we have needs but those needs are not being, I mean, uh, uh, the, the people that are supposed to address those needs have some level of not being competent, and uh, it actually <coughs> makes the resource allocation not to be what it's supposed to be. We, we, we get something that one would never thought 20, 30 years ago it will happen, where people like teachers, nurses, even doctors are mobilizing themselves, maybe through the unions, you know, publicly challenging their leaders, their, their, their employers in the public sector in education and health, uh, uh, protesting about poor working conditions, hospital infrastructure that is falling apart, education uh, equipment, uh, books that are not delivered on time, etc., etc. Now, in my experience, <coughs> what I'm saying, this is the world that we live in. But uh, should it be like that? I'm saying, no, it shouldn't be like that. It should be like that canvas that I've mentioned earlier. Uh, the, the powers that be in the public service should be, should be trained. Investment must be done to make sure that they are, they are made competent, they receive a, a, a good amount of a, a development to, to be in a position to <clears throat> articulate what I call compelling visions and strategies to transform these institutions to world-class uh, public facilities so that the public workers that are working here can feel uh, a spirit of engagement and a spirit of uh, motivation and, and are proud to be uh, public uh, workers, and they can deliver quality public work. Uh, the same is in business as well. We often hear uh, people saying, uh, people or employees join the organization, but when they leave, they leave managers. You know, which alludes exactly to what uh, I was actually saying earlier on in terms of uh, the canvas, to say, if those supervisors on the shop floor, those managers, those executives are not really you know, made competent, no effort 
is made to make them competent. No investment is made to make those people competent, to, 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 to push their emotional intelligence to pay those levels where they will be in a position to manage those, those particular institutions uh, in such a way that uh, it becomes successful entities with employees dying to be there, regretting to go home every day. So basically, this is how I see those. So as a conclusion, I say, if you look at the world, the first question that we must ask is, what do human beings want? Homo sapiens, what do they want? Once we crack that code, then we say, what then do we do to touch the dealers to be able to give the human beings, be it in the workplace, be it in, 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 in government sectors, what they want? Because if the leaders are trained to give what human beings want, then alternatively, the, 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 the human beings are going to give those institutions what they want. But the leaders can't give what they don't have. Good. This is a mouthful and it's very rich, but I think there's a discussion that I would like us to have later in saying how does your analogy of the canvas and the leader who opens up all of it, how does it relate to the defense industry? Yes. But you can yes. hold that for a moment. Yes. Okay. Can, can you share with us a little bit, uh, Tulani, on so how are you going to string this together from a methodological point of view? What is, what is the research methodology that's going to keep how are you going to keep this thing together? Yes. I think uh, if I look at the nature of the research that I intend to embark on, I'm intending to use what we call qualitative uh, research paradigm. Uh, because uh, I'm, I'm actually going to be dealing with perceptions of people. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be dealing with concerns. I'm going to be dealing with aspirations of people, mm -hmm. uh, things that people, uh, recommendations and things that people experience. Therefore, the type of research that I intend to go through, it should be a descriptive type of research. Hence, the, 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 the opting for the qualitative uh, paradigm, because the, from the qualitative paradigm, I would be actually looking at making sure that uh, uh, we get in and, uh, in, term, in terms of the research and we get uh, uh, data collected from people <coughs> in a very non-threatening way, way, so that uh, one can take it back and decode it and uh, get to get a meaning around what this, this whole thing is all about. And uh, Professor Benny, I intend to project this as a case study. And why I chose a case study vis-a-vis -vis other research designs is that uh, if I look at the, 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 the intention of the research, I feel the case study is the most suitable one because the case study allows you as a researcher to do a thorough, in-depth investigation of that phenomenon in this case, which is going to be leadership. And uh, it actually uh, it, it is based on the collection of uh, uh, vapor data versus numerical data. And it actually has, allows you to describe that phenomena. It allows you to, uh, to explain it, analyze it. And then it also allows you to evaluate it. I think it also, as a case study, enables you as a researcher to get the context not just the content, but the context of that phenomenon. When you say leadership in the defense industry, what is the context of that leadership? What are the confines that those leaders in the defense industry are working under vis-a-vis -vis leaders in Vodacom, for instance? So that's the context. That, that's how the, the case study helps you to, 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 to be able to, 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 to do it. Can I ask a bit on the case study? You can look at case study in the, in the narrow sense. And yes. so I'm going to draw a line around Danelle, and I'm going yes. to talk to people within the defense industry. Yes. But you could also look at a case study systemically yes. and its positioning within a broader socioeconomic or a social system. To what extent are you intending to use the perspectives from the broader social system yes. as part of that case study? There are also people who are indirectly involved in defense. Absolutely. The idea going forward is to identify the, 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 the non-aligned, uh, 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 these, if I say non-aligned before I can go further, let me explain to, 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 to the ladies and gentlemen. In South Africa today, there is one big OEM that is actually responsible for defense or is trusted by South Africa for defense and that's DINAM. It, uh, as I've explained, it is, it, it's actually part of the uh, state of our companies. But this is where the, the landscape in South Africa decides who's the big player, who's the small player. 
what happens, the, 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 the uh, um, modus operandi is that uh, the, the RFPs that go out, requests for, uh, for, for proposals, and the, the, the contracts that get uh, 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 placed, they're placed in denial. The army doesn't place orders on small companies. There's a level of trust in terms of uh, security of supply. They place it uh, at, at a bigger OEM as a prime contractor, and then it's up to this prime contractor to say who of the small players that are in the defense industry in South Africa are aligned with me. That's where the weight alignment comes. <coughs> they can subcontract. Because there are those that are small in South Africa that are not aligned. Um, as of late, as of 1992, the, 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 the defense in, in South Africa, the small companies have not been driving because there was, there was a monopoly. Nobody was allowed to compete with Dinell for, for, for tenders in the government. Today, it's an open market. The small companies, if, 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 the, if the DOD feels that uh, this, 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 this proposal looks good, they can give the, 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 to, the, to this company except Dinell. Now, basically, going back to the question is that with that as a background, the entry level would be the defense industry, the, de the defense companies, the general first of all as a prime, with the defense companies that are aligned to, to, to them. But then it's going to be interesting to see, for instance, what are other parastatals, because we're part of the parastatals, who are not in defense, but they, they are managed under one, what we call shareholder combat, under the Department of Enterprise. The Department of Enterprise, all these parastatals that are under them, they actually have what they call shareholder compact that they use to manage those people, of which the is one. But none of those other uh, uh, parastatals are defense. So it will be interesting to say, outside defense, how, what does the picture look like around leadership uh, uh, philosophies, leadership styles, leadership uh, uh, activities, and so forth, in these other parastatals, for instance, in South Africa? But it's going to be interesting as well to, to look at private sector. Uh, to say, you know, what are the, uh, the, ni the nimble, the, the, guy, the guys that are fast, the FMCGs, what is their um, uh, uh, approach? What is their uh, strong points and stuff like that? How can it be tweaked to suit the environment of Dinel? Because the challenge that we have in Dinel is that, uh, also the in, in defense industry, is that uh, it comes, it still is, but it comes from what we call a military doctrine. A military doctrine is this guy, this holy guide that guides how managers do budgets, how, how marketing is done in the defense industry, and, and how people are managed in the, in the defense industry, and so forth and so forth and so forth. Any deviation of that is zero tolerance. <coughs> now, this has been found to be against any commercial principles that business schools are teaching to say, this is what you should be doing uh, if you are in business. Uh, there's a clash there. Now, the issue is then to say, you're coming from that background. You, you're sitting with a, 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 a industry where institutional knowledge, knowledge of the defense networks, is regarded as its competence, uh, which creates a little bit of a barrier of entry with people with leadership serving who wants to join the uh, defense industry. Because if this person hasn't been in the defense to understand how the, to understand how the network work and uh, how the processes work, you know, taking into the past, then it's regarded as not competent for this environment, you know, which is destructive on its own. Now, basically, one has to say, we, what we're going to build is going to be a very, I, I, I spoke to my um, uh, 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 guys that I work with to say, it should be a briyani, a very tasteful briyani, where it talks to the competencies that are still relevant to the defense industry, but how can we, you know, uh, increase the level of competency there around what defense still wants, because you cannot ignore the protocols we need in now. Otherwise, it's not only a defense industry. How do you select and choose things that work for leaders in that area and leave the rest? You incorporate that in terms of the, 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 what you're going to develop, but add commercial mindset, add entrepreneurial mindset into this whole thing, add things that uh, are, you know, thought leadership, things that people are going to do to make sure that employees that come here they feel that uh, they are actually corporate citizens. They, there's, there's employee motivation, there's employee engagement, and uh, highly skilled engineers, they flock into this, into, into this industry. So it's going to be a very, very miscellaneous pot that we're going to put together to make sure that when we present it on the board, it covers all the areas that the research will be telling us 
I'll be short folks. Okay, so you're very aware of the complexity, it seems to me. But Roy, I want you to help me. Mm. Don't you think he's a potential paradox? I think there's a huge Do you want to talk to him about it? Yeah, I think I, there is a huge paradox. And I think that, number one, you're dealing in a totally artificial environment. Yes. And that environment is completely dominated by politics. Absolutely. And yes, so, yes. if you're going to, and that's the first thing. The other yes. thing that worried me, if you said to me, you're going to bring these artists to paint this canvas and that the corners of the canvas must be painted. Yes. Who said that must be painted? Mm -hmm. So there's a critical issue here. And, and my worry about this is that I think if you're dealing with what we would call in Da Vinci real wicked problems, and with all due respect, I'm not sure whether a case study approach is going to help you. Because I think you need to redesign that system. And I, I, I know you'll have to accept that you're going to have to you know, report to the Minister of Public Enterprise. Yes. But within that, you know, is the, how much does the government bag you guys out to do that? No, I'm serious. So, so Roy, is it possible that he could use the case study and maybe whilst in the case study he will realize he needs something more? Yeah. Mm. Because that's almost what Prof. Roy is suggesting. Absolutely. You, yes. you, can, you can suggest you're going to work on the case study. Yes. But in exploring that, you're going to find challenges. If you want to look at it from that perspective. Absolutely. And say maybe we don't need to paint all the corners. Yes. And you may rather consider going into, for example, a grounded theory approach. Mm. Where you want to listen to the theory as it's defined by the people involved in it. But it doesn't mean you can't start a case study. Absolutely. Yeah. But you may you may transcend and add something. Emeka? Yeah. Uh, you want to add to that? Yes, I I will try to wrap my mind around what he has been saying. And it looks like uh, he has quite a lot of things, and uh, maybe you would, uh, to be able to link them together, you would have to understand the string theory. Yes. You know, yeah. Yeah. You know to be able to link all these things together. <coughs> but uh, this research is the way I'm looking at it. I think you are going to do quite a uh, you're going to deal with certain things here. Number one, you know, the most difficult thing somebody has to deal with when he's doing research is to find that which he wants to know. Yes, you know. If you find that which you want to know, you have to find whether that is knowable. Okay? And uh, if it is knowable, which methodology you are going to use to know it, and whether that methodology is available to you. Okay. If it is available at this point in time, or it might be available in 15 years' time, you know, because you know things like this happen. But if I go for my interrupt, so that's what Prof. Roy is saying. Yes. He, he's, he's on that journey, yeah. but he may experience that what he thought would be the technology to help him to get to the noble may not answer his questions. Yes. And he must just be aware of that. Yes. Mm. Just yes. to confirm what you're saying. Yes. Thank yes. You. Okay. yes. So, so in, in that sense, you know, I think you're going to deal with a lot of the theories behind design, okay? Uh, what is the, what is the, um, uh, what do you base design on, you know, like, what would be the limit of design, you know, what okay. are you designing, the nature of design, you have to deal with that, and you have to deal with uh, the theory of uh, uh, implementation and the theory of, of uh, evaluation, yes. okay? So it is these theories, the reason why you have to deal with these theories is because that will tell you the basis of your knowledge that you're trying to develop. Did you get a point? I'm with you, 100%. So by the time yes. you are through with all those things, there are certain things I believe that would naturally be sifted. You know, they would just fall off. Okay? And if you are talking about, uh, you are looking at things that work, where are you going to get these things that work? Are you going to talk about uh, innovation? What about uh, imagination? What about creativity? Are you, what, what kind of innovation are you going to bring into, into, into yes. leadership? Yes. And is this leadership actually going to be different from the kind of leadership that you have in the other industrial sectors? Mm -hmm. The kind of uh, leadership, you know, the one lady that came here last month and tried to excite our mind about the leadership and the way she went into a lot of things, you know. So that you get to deal with quite a lot of things about leadership. <coughs> and who is the leader here and uh, who is leading the leader and, uh, and all the stuff. I think these are issues. You know. So it's complex. Yeah, this yes. is the message you're giving. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank okay. you. Can I comment on that? Yes. Okay. I 
once visited uh, the government training institute, they call themselves Palama, they're in Pretoria, um, uh, to, to, to really support that comment. Um, then I had to be, we had a team, we had to be taken through a, an hour uh, presentation to say what is the institution all about, successes, highlights, failures, and stuff like that. I believe that um, the question is correct. It's something that it's a food for thought for me because I had that same question as I, when I was in that institute to say, what's going to change on Monday? I couldn't get that because um, uh, I felt that uh, it looks to me like uh, a repeat of what has been done. It's just a matter of packaging it better. Mm -hmm. But the principles are not changed, but uh, packaging it better, call it something different. And uh, that was my, uh, I'm sorry if there's maybe somebody coming from that institution. It's, not, it's constructive criticism, <laughs> which I gave on a day. And uh, I worked out feeling that uh, if I picked up a book on what uh, they used to be called something else before they could be called Palama, there was a name that was used. And something like that, yeah, some. If I picked up a document of something and I picked up the Palama document in terms of what is the, the, the philosophy around this development was, I, I, I saw I'm reading the same document, but I'm just, you know, different terms and stuff like that. So yes, definitely this is what uh, one you have to apply his mind around to say, you know, uh, area differentiation, where is the differentiation element, which is going to excite people to say, you know, why should I really buy in into this thing? If I'm the group CEO of the now, who's got other things that I believe are important, and uh, this uh, HR director stands in front of me and present this, which is going to cost me money, uh, what, what are those compelling uh, elements in this thing that are, are, are showing uniqueness, are showing return on investment without doubt, and are showing that uh, they are talking to the environment that I'm operating in, value adding. So, yeah, I, I take it. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? <coughs> yes. Um, yes, I'm, I'm, yes, I'm called to this, so uh, Professor, maybe my questions out of context, please just let me know. I'm working on the information that I received. We're collecting the dots. <laughs> Everything is well. <laughs> so my only question would be, from the information you provided, is how important would you think differentiate your attention to the following, with the fo main focus be only on the canvas, in other words, the end result of what you'd like your leaders to achieve, or would you need to extend that to the importance of the brush, in other words, the actions of the leader that you need to take, do we need to look at the competency of the leader, uh, do we need the actions you've made mention of the guides that are, that are available, how much focus would we need to pay attention to that, and then lastly, would you even further need to extend it to the artist himself, to the leader. Um, how important would that be to focus on the leader and the initial competency of the leader and then also take into consideration the background of the leader. So how would you differentiate the importance uh, in those three aspects? Thank you very much. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. To me, not playing with your own frame. Yes. Yeah. I, I think uh, what I'll have to do uh, is I must, I'll actually, as my one of my critical points that I'll have to, as a point of departure, to differentiate what the means are going to be and what the end is going to be. Um, what do I mean by that is that um, if, if I start now putting together the, the I've developed here, I'm going to explain it quickly, what I, in my view, uh, 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 preliminary thoughts, what will be the elements of putting together this framework uh, uh, going forward. Uh, it's a five-legged type of uh, uh, framework, uh, legs on this framework, uh, framework that I'm going to, to, to present. But basically, what is going to happen is the, 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 the history um, that I've sketched in terms of uh, the kind of leaders that we have today, that are most of the leaders that are in very good positions in, in, in this defense industry, they came through the ranks. They've got this, a different kind of, uh, a unique kind of uh, uh, schooling from the, from, from the doctrine. Now, if you're going to take that bicycle and say, I want you to You've been uh, riding on, 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 the, on the gravel. I want you to ride on a tart street of center. Now, firstly, you must start there and making sure, like you said, the brush. Make sure that the competencies that you give this leader are really the, 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 the enablers that are going to make that person to be able to, to deliver what you want. And then once you've made sure to say, these are the really relevant competencies that I'm going to plug in, you know, creating that fundamental shift from a theory X type of environment that they come from to, to, to the today type of a, 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 a thought leader that we expect to, to them to be, you then drill those competencies in. And then as you drill those competencies in, 
then your evaluation becomes important to say, what, what am I getting at the end, you know, which is now the, the, the results of the canvas. Are the, are, the, are, the, are the employees here feel identified with this leadership? What is the extent of the turnover, especially of the Generation Y and Millennium Generation guys that, are, that want the democratic type of leadership? Uh, uh, are they staying in this organization? Are they seeing the change? You know, what is the level of engagement? In terms of business results, are the business results after this intervention that I've done really showing a shift? You know, from an individual uh, uh, competency level, the pre-test that I did on this leader before I could put him through the development of these competencies I've designed versus the post-test that I'll do on the assessment. Is there a fundamental shift? Can it be attributed to this development I'm going to be? So the, the means and the ends are going to be very important. So what is going to be the things that are going to lead to this, which is now going to be what you put in on development? What is the quality of that? Is it relevant? How have you researched it to make sure that it's going to give you the same results? Once we've done that, then you say, OK, let's put this thing into action. And then at the end, you're saying, is it giving me the results? You know, so which is why my talk <coughs> goes up around to say, you will design, you will develop, you will implement, but you're not going to end there. You have to evaluate as well. You know, bring back to the organization and say, has this thing worked? You said you've got a five-legged framework. Uh, yes. You can't do that yeah. because you're going to direct your whole research towards proving that framework. Okay. I, with all due respect, I think you've got to forget about that. <clears throat> okay. Because what might, might, you might have an aha moment and say it's going to come out, yes. but if that is going to be your guiding thing, you're going to, you're going to bend your research to that. Focus on forget it. 100%. And I think from a dimension point, that's the important comment. Yes. Yes. You don't need to prove that five-legged thing. You must allow it to emerge. David, do you want to make a comment? No, somebody behind oh, sorry. <coughs> yeah, I can identify with Pulani. You know, the subject is just so broad. And I think uh, he's got an uh, ontological position that uh, seems to dominate his thinking. Um, he should, what I've done and what I've taken away from the Da Vinci notes is, and it's taken me a long time to get it right, is describe the challenge and the problem. Uh -huh. And I think that will allow you to niche to focus your research. There was a lot of questions about methodology. I think it's difficult to be determined unless you know what you want to solve. Absolutely. The other issue is I think you're trying, and it's just a comment, I think you're trying to solve too much. Uh, yeah. there, there, there should be some driving message that you want to give your organization, <coughs> and it will come up with your problem statement. Yeah. Uh, at the moment, your analogy of a canvas actually reflects how you think. Because an open canvas means I can do anything. As, I can do anything. <coughs> and you can have difficulty determining from a research point of view what you're going to incorporate in your research. So I just allow, I just, my advice is, and I've gone through some of this, niche it, identify your problem statement, um, have that whiskey on a Friday night, and the answers will come true. I almost thought I must have made a comment, but I would like to say, from a from a transdisciplinary mode and yes. from a mode two perspective, yes. I will challenge you on that. Okay. Because in a way I'm concerned that he could almost he can focus very clear and have a very good methodology, but he may miss the bigger picture. Mm. And I think it comes a little back to Roy's perspective. So I almost want to say he can do that. Yes. And maybe he must do that. But then at the same time I want to say he has to deconstruct it. Because otherwise, he will come up with a predefined box. And it will be beautiful, maybe, but it may not have any worth. Or it may have limited worth. Because I thought that he's predetermined what this framework should be. And he's trying to actually bring the lease to justify mm -hmm. his current. But you see, I like the idea of the canvas because that's open. Yeah. But then he must be true to it, as Roy says. He mustn't decide, he must paint everywhere. It's a canvas. Yes. And he must allow the reality to emerge as it is presented, not his reality, yes. 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 people's reality. Mm. I think we're making the same point. Okay. Yes. You, you got a very articulate way of doing it. But you, <laughs> <laughs> but you got the point, <laughs> keep your focus. Thank you. <laughs> just, just a comment for me. I'm, I'm a little bit confused. You said you spoke that sounds about, good. <laughs> uh, you spoke about a doctrine that was, uh, that was basically part of the legacy of this organization we that's you correct. pick up that people were doing things in a certain way. And I possibly give you the wrong impression that you're trying to create another doctrine 
by creating this leadership framework, which is going to say this is the Danelle's new way of leadership, which will then also restrict people so that anybody sitting in this room who doesn't fit in that framework doesn't fit into the Danelle. Am I right or wrong? No, I think, uh, can, can I, I just can respond? I almost, I don't yes. want him even to respond. Yes. Okay. But I want to say that's a beautiful comment. Yes. That he must contemplate. Because the sub message almost now from everyone is, is, is somewhere in between that. So I think that's an important comment. And you don't need to argue, but you, I Thank think you, you, must, so you must be aware of that. Thank you. Thank what what interests me is anybody worried about the fact that he wants to develop a leadership frame for defense? Yes. Mm. Ah. No, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Sophie, what is the challenge we want? Um, the challenge from my perspective is um, if I think of my layman's point of view of what defense organization is, mm. I get worried about, you know, you do research, right? But there are answers here and there are answers there because it's defense. So how is he going to select which ones are the authentic answers? from what he's getting. Even if it is a canvas, or painting, or he's mm. going to paint, the leaders mm. are going to paint. But if it's defense, I get the sense that some could paint on a porous canvas. And what we see here is not the actual thing. It's what we see on the reverse side. Mm. That's actually what they've painted. Mm. So defense, it's, it's complex. But that, that's, beautiful. Mm. Mm. that's beautiful. That's mm. beautiful. I think there's a lot of wisdom in that. And I want you to play because I didn't hear that message okay. until now. Linda, and then you want to make a comment, Poppy? Um, my comment is very similar to Sophie's, where I say you are looking at <coughs> the defense or leadership within the defense arena from the outside, from a natural perspective, from a very soft you spoke about coaching earlier on. Um, and we are going into an area where there is doctrine, as you rightfully said. The two are very, there's the juxtaposed. Yes. How are you going to make an entry into there? And then at the beginning, you gave us a long drawn background of yourself. Where are you bringing this into your research? Or how, how is it going to influence your research? I think um, the effect of the matter, which I think is a, is, a, is a starting point in terms of there's a doctrine that that's where you come from. Is the doctrine still relevant? I think uh, as much as people are trained in this thing, the economic factors are coming in the face of the in the boardroom to say this doctrine is outdated. Mm. Examples: mm. small companies are taking over that are run on commercial basis. They are taking over in terms of uh, 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 the, 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 the contract that should be coming to to, 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 to the bigger OEMs because they are enabled. They use uh, uh, commercial principles to, 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 to market themselves, to, to, to run their organizations. And they, then they lead the, 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 the big OEMs like uh, Dinell, they stay behind. That's a wake up call to say, you know, is this thing still, is this doctrine still, still working? Internally, the, 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 the dynamics within the, the defense industry is the fact that uh, because it's technical in nature, the, 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 it wants to attract what we call knowledge workers because it has to compete overseas in terms of other OEMs, you know, in Germany with other very high, highly um, um, commercial industries there in defense. But the fact of the matter is these knowledge workers, they, 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 there's a, a huge exodus of them the moment they land in because they see this canvas is not for me. Now those are wake up calls where we as the HR professionals are coming in now and say, guys, isn't this the time to do things differently? Look at the, what the scoreboard is telling us. And then from that perspective, then leader says, what do you have that is going to be new, that's going to be unique? And then you come in and say, I want to develop something like this. I'm in the process of developing it. The results that I'm actually foreseeing uh, you know, uh, could be this a better retention strategy, better um, attraction strategy for the employees that you need but you can't get, a, 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 a better competition strategy is there in terms of uh, where, where are the industries are, because we're dealing with the people that are the, the, the leaders here. We're saying, 
get into it into these commercial principles. Be entrepreneurial, have emotional intelligence. We, we, we throw in all those things in a, in a, in a nice way. So in a, in a nutshell, the, 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 you, you, you have to, to put the scoreboard in front of the people and say, given this, do you think we should continue the way we used to do things 50 years ago? And then, it's, then you can take it forward. Okay. Uh, thanks. Um, uh, I, I want to ask you one question, then the follow-up question. Is this a framework to change leadership in general or in defense? Mm -hmm. Actually, I, I yeah. Okay. Yes, the, 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 it's, it's in the defense industry in a South African context. Now, in a South African context, as I explained earlier, the major role player is DINA. If you, if, you, if you really want to see the impact, DINA has to be a focal point, extending, of course, to the subsidiaries, extending to the other uh, uh, small, medium defense industries within the company, within the, within the country, that are not very visible. But if you don't focus on DINA, which is a major role player, a prime uh, OEM in South Africa, then you miss the boat. Okay. Follow up, Poppy? Okay, follow up is, the, I got worried when I hear the word defense from knowing defense as a, as a department that we used to call it secret services because <laughs> they don't tell anything. <laughs> and they don't tell anything. So I know a point has been made to say, are you going to get the right information? Then I'm also asking, is this a problem that has been identified by defense? Is, does defense want to change? Hmm. Because if defense doesn't want to change, I'm And I think we're getting deeper now. Because I don't think Linda is necessarily comfortable with what he answered you. Because in a way, you are making the assumption defense is okay. Now, what if defense is not okay? If I may put it that blunt. We, we change it. What if uh, defense is okay? <laughs> now I'm just trying to put the question into context. I want you to consider as part of your thesis. Yes, sir. Your contribution in bringing the concept of leadership and defense into the same argument. Yes. Because your canvas analogy is create an open, accessible world. What is the canvas for defense? Because at the end, I'm, de I'm developing something to do what? To kill <coughs> yes. the painter. Yes. <laughs> I'm just asking. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm actually going to mention something that I didn't mention as well, which I think it, it talks to the question. What will make the change to be accepted, or what will make people receptive? And, and, and do the defense wants to change? If, 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 if you look at the, 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 the way, the, the, especially the South African context, Africa, uh, 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 the whole continent, is relying on us uh, uh, for, 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 from a security point of view and from a defense point of view, but not to give him them things that they kill. If you, ladies and gentlemen, can go with me on this. <laughs> Humanitarian activities like the mining in, in Africa is done by, by us, by the defense companies of South Africa. In a humanitarian, with the UN, going into, the, into, this, into these countries, <coughs> disaster recovery uh, 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 expeditions and stuff like that. Now, question is, a, a leader that has been in denial, working on the, that philosophy, that doctrine of weapons of mass destruction. Mm -hmm. if, you, if, you, if yours is the, is, the, is, the, is the worst one, you're the best competent person. Mm -hmm. And take this person and say, now, design a strategy, a humanitarian strategy to enter Africa. That guy can't, mm -hmm. because you, 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 you're taking a rugby player, you're putting a soccer field. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm saying with, with the framework, I'm saying, guys, the ball game has changed. The ball is now round, no longer over. I think let's talk about it to say, because we're going to use the same players, how do we teach them to play rugby? And this is where I come from with the new leadership development uh, sort of framework. Because at least we sensitized him. I think it's very great for, as from a university perspective, to learn. Yes. We don't have any view of what is right or wrong. So the fact that you want to work on leadership and defense, we embrace it. But we want to, and that's what the colleagues probably is trying to make you aware, let's think of it in, in its full consequence. Context, yes. In its full consequence. There's a comment there at the back, Rocco. Sorry, uh, Shalani, just one other issue I'd like to ask. With regards to legislation, because the mouth is governed by legislation. Correct. Uh, you know, and it's, it's a very uh, bureaucratic 
Absolutely. Okay, but how will you overcome that? Because there's certain information that you're not allowed to divulge. Mm. Because you, I mean, if you look at the, the knowledge as a company <coughs> itself, you, you cannot get information. Even if you see so IPC, the companies are this, mm. you will not get any information because it's one of those companies that is hidden in your way. Absolutely. Um, I don't know how you're going to overcome because you're going to have to look at certain issues to overcome okay. and get part of it to give you an cabinet okay so that's a consideration to learning that you must just be aware in your methodology Garth? this is Garth, sorry no it's Gavin Gavin sorry hi to Lani. hi there Gavin I use a very same sort of di dichotomy um, what I'm reading between the lines is that you're saying there's competition out there, out there. so there's a pers not a perception mm -hmm. The one question that we need to ask, how much is core funding and how much do you need to go out into the market to become competitive? That is your edge. Exactly. Because what, what I'm seeing here is you're sitting with the bureaucracy on the one side, who depends on the 60-70% core funding, they can be fine. On the other side, you need to grow your balance sheet by going out and gain new business. So that is where this model should be applied. Because when you sit and you look at DPE, it's not 100% funding anymore. Yes. Um, yes. The, the field has opened since 2008 with the changes in legislation, so it's open market competition. Yes. So your model is applicable to the sustainability of the, the organization business. beyond core funding. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. I'm accepting that comment. David, you want to make any comment? Uh, it was very well put. Mm. Yeah. Very okay, Steve Maker. Yeah, this is the very last one. Um, though there has been a scattering of uh, recognition of the technological aspect of uh, defense, if you look at it, it is purely, purely a technological thing. Um, it is, the, the technology is not a very cheap one and it has not been very easy to come by. And those who have this technology are not dispensing it quite easily. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about uh, training people, and I don't know how you're going to uh, bring people to be trained on uh, how to become uh, missile technologists, mm -hmm. I mean, missile scientists, you know, rocket scientists, you know, nuclear scientists. If you look at this thing, you would see you have been mentioned of Africa, and which is quite interesting to me. I, I have not heard <coughs> from your point of view, how we are going to be technologically competent and uh, uh, when it comes to, if you ju juxtapose Africa with other, say, Europe, America, um, Asia, if you see the, let's not talk about the arms deal, you know, they went to Sweden and uh, France and other stuff to procure already made arms, okay, and those arms have capacity. And the making of those arms, we don't have the capacity in Africa or in South Africa or in other part of Africa. Now they have talked about going uh, the nuclear, uh, uh, yes. whatever. Yes. They have gone to Russia, they have gone to France, they have, these guys are competing. You know, and that, that, that is going to take about 1.2 trillion rands, okay, as the case may be. We don't have that technology locally, that's why they are actually looking for it. Is that the people who have it are knocking on the doors and pressing on us before? If they get this contract, they are going to control us like anything here. Do you get the point? So, the leadership, I don't know the, the kind of leadership you're talking about. It's not just make uh, Daniel to have a kind of a leadership, whether it's a dictatorial leadership or a democratic leadership, to be able to be procuring arms from Europe and America and, uh, and Asia. Or they have to have a kind of a leadership to evolve knowledge from within us, mm -hmm. technology, and for us to be able to go to space. That India has actually done something to Mars. That thing traveled for about 600 million <coughs> kilometers, and they landed it. And really, I'm gonna, I, you, yeah. On the 2nd of February, I'm going to take you. I'm going to show you something about South Africa, Absolutely. which will yeah. blow your mind. To say be careful. To we are say world that. leaders yeah. in many yeah. 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 yes. World leaders. So even the Americans are fighting and struggling to cope with the South African on some Absolutely. technology. But I think the These point that I do take from you, okay. is you want to say, if you talk leadership, mm -hmm. how do you talk about the technology? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's yes. The technology I aspect. think that, that's the message that you that must take maybe look at. Yeah. Okay, can we get a closing remark from somebody?
Nobody? Yeah. Let me come in, please. Please. Um, firstly, you only see what we want you to see. Yes. Could you say that again? You will only see what we want you to see. Therefore, okay. your idea of a canvas, and let's look at a genre of art. You could have abstract, you could have the painter using a specific tool, a specific type of brush, brush to paint abstract, and another tool, another kind of specific brush to paint still art. So your canvas is not possible. You have to have a multi, uh, multiple canvas approach, and then it's not integrated. And again, we go back to the issue raised on that side about visibility, accessibility, integration, and truth. And the truth drives the strategic imperatives, uh, imperatives of the sovereign and the strategic imperative of the contract. There is no link. There will always be a difference between the two. So if you want to really study defense, you would have to infiltrate the organization, <laughs> which for you at this stage, unfortunately, is impossible. Yeah, that's a very powerful comment. Yeah, it is. Yeah. That you can reflect on yeah, it as a PhD. Yeah, you. Yusuf, as a student, do you want to say what do you take? What do you take home today from this discussion? No, well, I haven't gone about to even doing my first research paper, so it's more about finding out how to go about doing your research and what methodologies to use, which I'm picking up in this research. But, um, and how's the discussion with Trelawney helping you? Where does it take you? <laughs> it takes me all over the place, to be honest. <laughs> 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 took him on a journey. Yes. But, uh, <coughs> the, most, the most questionable thing for me is deciding on what research to use for a specific instance. Where you said that you've gone about uh, a qualitative method of, of doing this. I'm just concerned as to how this would end up as a storytelling or would you need to prove correlation between, I don't know if I'm articulating yes, myself. Yes, you're saying yeah. it correctly. Yeah, yeah that's, mm. and I want to how, say would you, how would you find, uh, if I want to find out about research yeah. and how it's the same in different businesses or how to go about doing it as, as, um, uh, <laughs> as a successful, you know, mm. way of actual lead, uh, leadership, uh, yeah, what, how, how would I well, I think that's an important point, and I think that's why, Ruen, maybe you can come in here. My comment would be, there is no right and wrong answer. But you have to be true to yourself and say, what, what, what are the methodological tools that are available speaks closest to me? So if he, if he wants to touch the emotive nerve of the deepest understanding of the people, he will probably go more, you know, a... Uh, ethnographic or auto-ethnographic description or storytelling or narratives. There are, there are many well-defined ways of, ex of expressing how you want to conduct your research. But you as the, as the researcher need to go and play with those things to some extent. You have to go and read about them and say, this doesn't talk to me. You have to, until you get the one that speaks closest to where you are. And that's why the ontology is so important. And if I listen to where Tulani comes from and how he thinks, I can understand why he will choose a qualitative frame. I can also understand why he will use a descriptive frame. Because he want to, doesn't want to talk in exact terms. He want to talk in words and emo there's some emotion around it. That's the kind of thing that, he, that relates to. So my answer would be you must find in what is published around methodology what is closest to where you come from. And there's no right or wrong. If he chooses the case study, and as is indicated, he may on his journey experience these, these limitations, then you will indeed go and look at grounded theory, you may look at other, other options to consider. But that's part of the, of the work that you have to do. To talk to colleagues around here and say, what, what, what tools are you playing with? Yes, All right, me. last comment. Yeah, I, I think if somebody's talking about design, develop, implement, and evaluate leadership, one research methodology, like qualitative, cannot be sufficient. Okay. Secondly, to base the research on case study of a particular country will not actually 
makes good sense if you don't make a competitive analysis. Because for me, I say it for, from this perspective. If you are talking about leadership in the defense industry in South Africa, it means you want to act, you have actually seen some sort of leadership style in defense somewhere else. We should think if you bring your own model in South Africa, com making comparative analysis with the two, it will make a difference in South Africa. Because at the end of the day, if you have to evaluate something, the question will be, is this making a difference? And that difference must be in South Africa. So is your research going to make a difference? The answer must be yes. Therefore, what I'm trying to say here is, if you are looking at the qualitative approach, don't leave out the quantitative approach as well. That would help to balance it. I think that's very right. valuable, that's good, because yeah. you can mix more than one. Yeah. But you're probably yeah. saying qualitative in the sense that will yeah. be your predominant Absolutely. engagement. Mm -hmm. But I think that's very valuable. Right. I think the other thing is also important. Remember, PhD at Vinci is a global mm -hmm. perspective. So yes, case study will have to, you'll, you'll have to broaden that to ensure that somebody in Sweden will find an, a liking in reading what you contribute. Okay. So it's not just about telling this little story, South African story. but you have to juxtaposition it with, with something else. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Tulani. Thank you for Good luck. Thanks. <laughs>